a small steam pump that does not work. Part 2. This pump has a few problems, the main one being that it will not run. I would guess that many of the nuts and bolts have been over tightened and have physically distorted the brass parts. This is evident by the fact that one of the main 4BA nuts that holds the cylinder assembly together has completely stripped. The question is, is it worth repairing? Or is there an unorthodox quick fix? This is a steam chest cover, and as you can see, it's not anywhere near flat. This is after rubbing it on the whetstone for quite a while. What I'm doing here is screwing an inlet fitting onto the steam chest, which makes it easier to connect compressed air to it. And when I attach the compressed air line and open the valve, this is what happens. It is trying to work now, but not very well. It will not run without some intervention. Here, using my finger, I'm just helping it along. This part of the job is getting to be a bit of a habit. I must have done this ten times already. Removing the nuts and the four washers from the steam chest so I can have a look inside. On one side of the steam chest are lots of marks. I don't quite know what's going on here. Has it been run over by a car? Has it been thrown through a window? Who knows? I thought I would rub the steam chest cover on the whetstone and try and flatten it off a bit more. This is a never-ending job and I still haven't got it flat. And I don't think that the steam chest itself is very flat. I'm about to test the shuttle piston using some compressed air. See how easily it moves. There doesn't appear to be anything wrong here. It moves back and forth very easily as I move the airline from side to side. This shuttle piston is what moves one of the slide valves. In this clip, once again, you can see a lot of scratches on one side of the steam chest, and some of them look quite deep. I know, just for a change, I will refit the steam chest and see if it runs one more time. One of the top bolts is missing, and this is intentional. It was not the right size. And I removed it. I think it's been over tightened because when I try a 7BA bolt in here, it really is tight. This tends to make me think that the thread is damaged. I will, in the fullness of time, re-thread this hole and fit a 7BA bolt with a smaller head. And once again, the pump is trying to run, but doesn't. I think it's time to have a look at my pump, which was also made by Don English of Jubilee Fittings. The only difference I can see is that the Allen grub screw points towards the piston, whereas on this pump it's sticking out the other way. I don't think this makes a great deal of difference, and it's much easier to adjust the Allen grub screw when it's pointing this way. Here's a shot of it with the Allen key in place. It wasn't fitted the right way round. The shaft is actually squared off to accommodate the Allen key so it can't slip. I tried the valve spindle block in many different places, and every time it didn't really work any better. The pump piston simply moved to either the top or the bottom, depending where the operating block was positioned on the shaft. Then I noticed something very strange. Take a look at this. If I apply a little bit of pressure using the handle of my screwdriver on the top of the shaft, suddenly it bursts into life. This is very odd. But it works. The only problem is it's going to be very difficult to fix the handle of the screwdriver in this position permanently and still make the pump look good. As soon as I press the part of the valve spindle that sticks through the top of this unit, it starts to work. I thought, Maybe I should turn the slide valve over, and this is just what I'm doing. Which once again required the removal of the steam chest cover with its four nuts and four thick washers. Thankfully, I can do this in my sleep by now. I used the point of a pair of very long nose pliers, and once again this made it work. If I apply any pressure to the valve spindle end, it works fine. Maybe I should just fit a depth stop on the top of the pump, which pushes down on the valve. Or even simpler, should I try a piece of silicon rubber tubing, or maybe two or three small O-rings on the shaft at the other end, 
between the operating block and the steam chest. Here's a close look at the top part of the valve, and the bolt is still missing as you can see, but look at the 4BA nut on the top right. I've turned the pump over now so it's on the left, but it's really beaten up. It is not a good idea to use ultraviolence on any of the components on such a finely made and very small pump. I replaced both of these 4BA nuts with brand new ones, and apart from they look better, they're holding the cylinder a little bit more securely. But here, even in slow motion, you can see I still have to have my finger over the end of the valve shaft. This is a puzzle to me, but it has happened before on other pumps. I do sort of remember in the dim and distant past. I'm very single-minded and compulsive, I freely admit this, so the beatings, to me, will continue until morale improves. This job is overdue. I'm re-threading the 7BA hole down into the steam chest. And then, miraculously, I found a 7BA bolt with a one size smaller head that was just right for the job, so I fitted it. I'm going to give more thought to this pump, but not at the moment, I'm too busy with some other jobs. Like the triple expansion engine, and of course the old Land Rover that I bought is not going to rebuild itself. I'm putting these dreadful gaskets back in the packet, along with the oversized nut, and the second shuttle piston that the owner of the engine made. That seems to be okay, but so is the original, and that's what is fitted to the pump. Temporarily wrapped in bubble wrap, I replaced the pump in the box that it came in. I haven't finished with it yet, there has to be a solution. That's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.